I recognise that we are at the tight end of the year. And uh, again, as um, Sue just and uh, Janet just alluded to, more tea at news. So we're all taking in that kind of information this lunchtime. So I really appreciate that. Um, my name is Emily Whitehead. I am one of the business advisors as part of Digital Tech Cumbria. I work with Winning Moves um, and with Janet to um, support a range of different small businesses um, in your county. <clears throat> um, my experience really lies, um, I had a corporate background in uh, regional sales management in the pharmaceutical industry and I was a national trainer. Um, but I came out of that about 20 years ago and have been working for myself for the last 17 years. My first business was in fact in the tourism industry. So for the first seven years, I ran um, holiday accommodation. And during that time, I was also beginning to support other businesses and um, really helping them with their marketing. Digital marketing obviously didn't really exist at the time. It was quite a while ago. And um, supporting businesses to use marketing effectively, given that they probably don't have a whole marketing department to themselves. I work now across the whole of the UK, working with large and small organisations on a range of different um, funded and non-funded projects. Um, and I am also an entrepreneur in residence for my local uh, university. So that's enough about me. I'm going to crack on and get on and talk about today's webinar. Now, um, it's brilliant to work with Cumbria Tourism and um, really offer some top tips, ideas and little inspirations, I hope, about getting your marketing house in order for 2021. So it is quite an, a little audit of a webinar, really. It's going to be me posing lots of questions, um, asking you about what you might have done so far and giving you some ideas about the things that you can do over this Christmas break, really to be in the best position to attract customers and visitors um, into the new year and beyond. Now, obviously, life is still fairly uncertain, but I think that this kind of audit work within your business is, is absolutely essential. It's never been more essential. And also there are quite a few simple, easy, little polishing uh, activities that you can do, which will make a huge difference. So I hope that's helpful. Now, just to say, um, there's a little bit missing off that slide where I was going to say, if you have anything that you want to add during the webinar, anything I say that you think, oh, what did she mean by that? If I'm getting too technical or I rush over something, please just add something in the chat box. And Janet um, or Kate, who will join us, or Sue will help referee that. And, and I can stop and answer the question. Or you can just make a note of it. And we're going to have a really meaty Q&A session at the end so we can delve into anything. And I would say no question is a daft question. So please don't fear asking a question because you think it might be too basic or too technical. We will cover it. And if we can't cover it, we will find someone who can. So in today's uh, webinar, really, I want to cover the following what's changed and what we really need to understand about the tourism landscape um, as we sit today on the 17th of December, because it changes so often. Then I'm going to focus in on uh, helping you with a website audit. So really your key asset um, and quite often something that we, we tend to ignore. So we do our main updates when something big and major happens, but we don't necessarily um, play with our websites in order to optimize them to their best potential. We're going to talk about your customers. We know that your customers have changed, their needs may have changed, and what you can do now to make sure that you are really empathizing with your visitors, your potential customers, really communicating with them in the best way, and really understanding their point of view so that you can be there for them. We're going to talk about being special. 
Um, I like to talk about selling experiences over stuff. So uh, we can all sell stuff, but selling an experience is something that's so much more important. And the types of things that we can focus on to help us stand out, to help us connect with the customers who are going to understand our business or want to be it, it um, visitors and um, joiners, and those, and to really attract the visitors that really are going to um, love what you're doing. And then we're going to talk about marketing activity. So just some really simple. Um, practical tips to really bring together all your marketing because I'm sure most of you are doing loads of that kind of thing but it's really bringing it together in a slightly more strategic way so that you are fully prepared for the Christmas holidays the new year when we know that people will start to dream and hope even if they're not quite ready to book we need to be there at that dreaming and hoping stage in order to build relationships to get bookings and footfall through the door uh, when we can. Um, then uh, Sue from Cumbria Tourism is going to bob in and uh, tell us a bit about what Cumbria Tourism are doing to support you in your efforts and then we're going to have a QA and a at the end. So what I normally do at the beginning of webinars is I dig out loads of interesting stats and, and, and facts and figures about the subject area that I'm going to talk about but of course it was nigh on impossible to find anything concrete to share with you about 2020 and into 2021 um, with regards to domestic tourism. So international tourism and inbound tourism we know has um, really um, disappeared in many ways. And I know that a lot of you will have attracted international tourists um, and visitors and I know um, that that is likely to continue that kind of reduction. So I've focused really on domestic tourism because I think that is where we can max out our opportunities um, as far as attracting footfall and visitors. Now, I wrote this slide um, at the beginning of this week. Over 60% of the UK is in tier three. I suspect that's a lot higher today um, after the lunchtime announcements. That's not designed to be depressing for you but I think it's just important that we understand how our visitors and potential customers are living so that we're able to understand what we can do to attract them and to give them the confidence um, to come and visit Cumbria in 2021. By the end of 2021 we the, there are predictions and this is a this is a Visit Britain um, report which was updated and published on the 14th of this month and they're predicting obviously with about 100 caveats, that we will be back to about 85% of 2019 in terms of domestic um, visitor levels. And that's really encouraging, but we do know that staycations will feature heavily in 2021. People will be looking to try and escape. Those who love international travel will still try to do that. But I think a lot of people will um, forfeit that international travel um, in 2021 and decide to stay at home. Um, there are some predictions that armchair travel will be key in 2021. What is that? That is those people dreaming and planning. They may not be booking, but they are going to be dreaming and planning and how you fit into that customer journey to ensure that your business is at the top of their list when they do finally have the confidence, the money or the opportunity to travel. Um, I've already talked about staycations. Multi-generational travel will feature if the accommodation um, provides enough social distancing or appropriate accommodation or um, experiences or a, a visitor attraction that works with that. Social distancing, I think, will continue, um, but, bre um, but it's important that uh, those, you know, those domestic breaks will feature and they will be um, vital to people, even if they're just little short breaks during next year. It appears that clear COVID guidance is still really important. It really counts and flexible booking options or at least understanding what the flexibility might be in the event that somebody has to self-isolate or tiers change in the future will be vital as far as people making bookings. And experiences and memory making will be at the fore more than it's ever been. If you look at the trajectory of um, data about the visitor economy um, in the last few years, experiences have been vital is that, in that. Um, people are looking for 
experiences that enhance their life, make life better, teach them something new, makes them be the first person amongst their friends to have experienced something. And there's lots of evidence to show people will pay slightly over and above for that kind of experience. But of course, that trajectory has accelerated um, given the year we've had. And so that experience making and that memory making will be really important. So let's get on to um, website audit and what to do now. Um, all of you, I, I would imagine all of you have got websites and all of you will um, likely have done a great deal of work to make sure that your website has great images, is easy to understand um, and has all the relevant information. But so much has changed in 2020 uh, that most of us will have had to update our websites quite significantly. But also, um, it's important that your website is really ready for the new experiences people are looking for in 2021. So even if you've made those, those fundamental changes like adding a COVID statement or updating images this year, actually there's so much more we can do um, on our websites to make them um, or give them the return on investment that you've put into it as far as it being an asset in your business. So your, all your marketing activity needs to be focused on trying to get people to your website. I know that all of you will, or a lot of you will use OTAs or third party booking systems um, for visitor attractions potentially, but actually still prioritizing trying to drive people to your website is important. So Perfect. Thank you. I became muted for some reason. I couldn't unmute myself. Hope you can hear now. So sorry. I'm losing. I'm the host, and I'm losing my internet connection. So um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I could just see it flash up, and I thought I'm talking to myself. <laughs> so, getting back to websites, I'd like you all to to make notes here and just. Have a really good think about your website. The first thing we need to focus on is the customer journey. So uh, most of you will be aware of a customer journey. Uh, you may even have got as far as planning your customer journey and making sure that your business fits into every part of that journey as a customer or a visitor um, comes towards your business. But you can often character characterize a customer journey um, within the visitor economy is a circle, or at least I like to characterize it like that. And imagine this circle starts with a dreaming phase. So your visitors, your customers, will have a dreaming phase um, of their customer journey. They are thinking about their holidays, they're thinking about having a break, they are thinking about somebody's special birthday or anniversary, they're thinking about gathering with old friends they haven't seen. Now that is under normal circumstances. If you then add in the 2020 effect, if we're going to call it that, then you can imagine that people are heartily sick, just like we all are, of maybe their home, where they're at, working from home, and they're beginning to focus on trying to escape, trying to find ways in which they could either be on holiday with other members of the family in the future, or just going on holiday for themselves, or even just having a day trip to a visitor attraction or a walking day, etc. And so it's important when we think about that part of the journey and every part of the, of the journey, how your website fits into that part of their experience. So when they're starting to dream and you think about your website and your general marketing, how does your business fit into that part of their journey? Are you providing images, ideas, or experiences that really um, inspire them, help them feel confident, help them understand what is available where you are in it within your business? 
Then obviously they move then, you would hope, from the dreaming phase to browsing. So they're starting to have a good old look. They're properly searching now on Google. They're trying to find out what options are available for them based on their location and, the, and their budget and the types of activities that they're interested in. Again, how does your website perform at this stage? And always have that customer journey at the forefront of what you're thinking about. So when they are browsing and they are on Google, are they finding your website? Does your website turn up in the types of searches that they're putting in? So for example, and we'll talk about your customer base in a moment, but for example, if people are looking for holiday accommodation, um, that is, you know, on the doorstep of some decent walking and some decent hill walking, um, then does your website talk about all that stuff? Does it use those keywords within the website? And does the website um, talk about the interests and the activities that your visitors are looking for. And this requires you to be quite targeted in the types of visitors that you want to attract. Then obviously they get to the booking stage and then they get to the experiencing stage and then, then they get to the stage of their journey where they're beginning to share that experience with other people. The experience and sharing comes together quite often. So again, when they get to the booking stage, how easy, does, how easy is it for them to navigate through your website to find out all the information that they need and to book? And when they are experiencing their holiday with you or their short break, or their day visit at your small visitor attraction, for example, can they use your website to give them the information when they're in on site or when they are in um, location? So I want you to have that journey um, in your mind with all your, the types of marketing activities that you might start to focus on for 2021. The next thing we need to be aware of is um, our website, how Google compliant it is. So you can use um, Google Console for any of you who are using Google products, and I would, I would advise you all to if you can. Google um, doesn't have everybody as a fan, but certainly provides some brilliant um, platforms with which you can um, tap into to get the best information for your business, and they're free. So using something like Google Console, which will help you understand whether there are any um, broken links within your website, whether there are any problems within your website, what Google does is it pops your website in there and you, it will search through and it will tell you if it, there are problems that it perceives about the way that your website is working. It also gives you things like um, the load time, so how quickly it takes for your website to load. So Google compliance includes things like, is your website mobile friendly? Um, this means that it's fully mobile optimized as opposed to looks okay on a mobile. So again, you can go, if you um, search on Google for, is my website um, mobile friendly? Google has a free checker and you can pop your website in there and it will tell you whether it thinks it's it's mobile friendly so some of you might feel that you've got a mobile friendly website but in fact it might not be fully optimized this is vital because google actively downgrade websites that are no longer mobile optimized the other thing for you to think about is and we'll talk about seo in a minute is your website readable easily readable by google and that means has it got good meta titles the way that you can check that is that when you when you have your website open in a browser you will all have little file tabs at the top of your browser you can hover over your file tab and it will pop up and tell you what the meta title i.e what google can read about that page of the website if your google if your website home page is listed as home slash rose cottage bed and breakfast or you know bob's cafe then you need to be aware that nobody really on google ever searches for home bob's cafe what they might search for is family friendly organic cafe near windermere um, and that's much more likely to um 
mean that Google provides your website as a result for their users' searches. So you can do a very quick free audit of your website to check that you have good meta titles or titles um, for each page of your website. The other thing that it's important to um, think about is loading time with your website. So again, if you've got big, beautiful images on your website, that's brilliant. We want it to look really attractive, but use something like Google Console to check that that isn't slowing down your website. Because again, if your website is slow to load, then Google will move on and give, and give uh, they will get that data and they will give somebody else's website as the result for any searches. We already talked about um, the customer journey quite clearly, and it's important that your website is also uh, very, very up to date. So traditionally, we might update our websites a couple of times a year. Maybe we do our blog regularly, um, but ultimately, unless there's a big price change or we redecorate a bedroom or we change the prices of the entrance fee, we very rarely make big changes to our websites. But this year, all of you will have, will have or should have added a COVID statement about the kinds of activities that you are bringing into your business to keep people safe. But this needs to be regularly updated. I was only talking to a business um, last week about this. They'd, they'd added a COVID statement back in July, um, but actually the way that they were serving breakfast had adapted again because... Um, legislation and, and rules and guidance have slightly changed. So they've had to update that again in order to attract customers for um, from January onwards. So making sure that you have all the information and the up-to-date information about your business being safe. Don't forget you've got things like uh, Visit Britain's We're Good To Go badge which is uh, really important. So for any of you who are not part of that scheme, it has been confirmed now that that's being extended. And it's just a very quick visual for people to understand, oh yes, this business is up to date, it's relevant, it's got all the latest information, it's safe, and it's so important. I've started to talk about metadata and, and I really obviously could do a whole um, afternoon just on search engine optimization. I don't want you to get too stressed by the, the language I'm using. That's a meta title is really just the title that Google reads about each page. But then there's metadata, which is essentially the words and images and the information that Google reads as it goes through your website. And it's really important that you are consistent across your website. If you're the top of your page, your page title of your website talks about um, cycling routes near your bed and breakfast, then it's really important that you talk extensively about cycling routes around your bed and breakfast in the page. Now that sounds bonkers, but actually it's really important from a trust ranking point of view, from Google's point of view. It wants to know that what your website says it is, it is in fact that. Because then that means, again, it, it adds to its confidence to provide your website as a result to users. So think about keywords and also your images. So it's great that you've got amazing images on your website, but make sure they are alt tagged. So this is alternative tagging. You have made sure that your image has writing behind it that Google can read. Otherwise, Google will perceive it as a black hole in the middle of the web page. And again, it's important that the, um, the alt tags or the, the text behind that image describes what the image is. So if it is of Helvellyn, then say it's of Helvellyn. If it's the front elevation of your bed and breakfast, then say it's the front elevation of your bed and breakfast. Because various, uh, you know, some of your users may use an audio option um, when they're on the internet, so it makes it accessible. But also, it's important that it relates then to what the content of that page is. So these are very simple SEO activities that you can do. And these simple steps will make a difference because after all, you're working so hard on making sure your business is right for your visitors. You're working hard by uh, trying to use social media, email marketing. You're trying to make your website look attractive. But if Google can't read your website, then it's all for naught in terms of your users 
or potential users or, or customers finding your website on Google. The other important thing to do is imagine your website is being used at three o'clock in the morning by somebody with insomnia. And you need to always assume that somebody is using your website like that. They can't call you, they can't message you, they can't email you. They, so does your website give them everything they need to know to go ahead and book your place or visit uh, or book a, a ticket or a visit to your place? And I always say that because actually most people won't pick up the phone these days. Most people will want very quick answers. And 70% of all leisure bookings are done by women. And more than likely finding the perfect holiday day out visit is going to be someone's to-do list. And if they can't find exactly when the opening times are, or whether you have a socially distanced breakfast uh, room, or whether you um, do a discount for early booking, or whether you allow guide dogs. If they can't find that information, they will move on. So I always say, read your website as if it was three o'clock in the morning and you wanted to book there and then, can they do it? And that takes me to online booking. I know that some of you may just rely on uh, OTAs for online booking and that's okay. I know a lot of you are trying to reduce your OTA um, reliance and would like more direct bookings. That's good too. But it's really important that wherever somebody visits your website and they decide they want to go ahead and book, that they can take that action quickly. Whether that takes them to a slightly different platform, uh, a free to book or, a, or a, an integrated booking platform that might look similar to your website but is slightly different, or whether that is entirely integrated online booking system within your website, it's really important. What you don't want to do is have a situation where they have to email an inquiry. Because if they have to email an inquiry, they'll likely move on, especially if it's three o'clock in the morning. So make sure that that part of the journey is really seamless, that you've answered all the questions and it's easy for them to make that buying decision. And really, when you think about your website, think about eliminating blocks. So what I mean by blocks is really um, either emotional or physical blocks within the website. So if somebody finally arrives on your website, you have worked blooming hard to get that user on your website because you've worked hard on your SEO, you've, you've worked hard to make sure that Google can find you. Finally, they land on your website, and what you don't want is to have any out of date information. So we don't want blogs that, you know, finished in 2015. We don't want availability to be not live for January. We don't want out of date information about your um, COVID um, safety or your COVID statement. We don't want uh, the top of your image to be all about an event that took place two years ago because all of that will put your customer off. They'll think, is this a real business? Are they still open? Maybe they closed during 2020. Are they up to date? People immediately lose trust in your business. Um, and also other blocks like lack of information. So if they need an access statement, they need to understand whether their wheelchair can get up the path. They need to understand if their child can find a quiet corner if it gets too loud and busy. They need to understand if their guide dog needs, is able to um, join them on all areas of the day out. Then it's absolutely vital that, that the journey through your website is really seamless and it's easy to find. Time and again, I come across websites which are great. They look amazing and it's all brilliant, but things like the access statement, or the this kind of deep in uh, the detail about whether they can dry their muddy boots or whether they can store their kayak or their expensive mountain bike in your outbuildings is in a little kind of hyperlink somewhere deep inside um, another page. If it's too difficult to find, people will miss it and they'll move on to a different business. So again, make sure that it's really easy you know, they go on their website and it's obvious, oh, there's a lovely red button for access statement. There's a great 
there's a lovely green button for my COVID statement or there's uh, an F, a frequently asked questions page. Just make it really simple. So I've gone through a lot and frankly, I could talk all day about websites <laughs> um, and I'm sure you will. So I'm gonna move on now. Um, but if you have any questions about websites and I realize I've used some technical language and some of you might think, well, how do I actually change the SEO on my website? I will answer that in the Q&A if that's okay. Ah, now, could someone just move? Mm. Uh, bear with um, my. Um, my slides are no longer moving. Across. Okay, got it. It started to work again. Sorry about that. So the next thing I want to talk about is your customers. So I've already alluded to this and most of you will be really aware of this, that our customers have really changed in 2020 in so many ways. In some ways they haven't, but in so many ways they have. The first thing that I want to talk about is to ensure that all of you are absolutely clear which types of customers slash visitors that you are trying to attract to your business. If we try to be businesses that are just in effect shouting into the wind, hoping that, you know, we let's imagine you have a self catering cottage in the Lake District and you are just hoping that anybody comes through your door and, and, you know, of course, all business is good business. But actually, if we don't talk specifically to our customers that we would like to attract because of our location, because of what we can offer, because of the experiences that we can share, then it's very difficult for us to do good targeted marketing. And it also means that you become part of a mass marketing culture. So you're simply comp competing with booking.com or any of those other big OTAs. What you want to do as a small business in tourism is be very specific about the types of customers that um, will be attracted to your business. Are you in the family market? Are you in a couples only market? Are you looking to attract really outdoorsy type people? Are you looking to attract people who've never been to Cumbria before, but because of staycations, um, they, you know, they can't do their normal hiking in, in the Alps, but they're going to be doing it in the UK for the first time. Are you trying to attract people with um, particular special needs or with specific hobbies in mind? It's really important that you try to focus in on the type of customer you want to, or visitor you want to attract because that will make your overall marketing so much easier. You can use the right keywords, you can be in the right space in your marketing and you can ensure that people really um, will love what you're doing and will want to come to you because you're special. So that's the first thing I want to say about customers. But let's imagine that all of you have a customer base or had a customer base before 2020. You knew who your customers were and that may well have changed in 2020. I know lots of um, business owners who've talked about attracting new types of customers they'd never had before. So customers that may have, or visitors who may have traveled from further afield. So maybe you got lots more visitors from London for the first time. Maybe you've got different types of visitors who weren't used to being in an outdoorsy type location for the first time. Maybe you started to attract families with kids who, um, who may normally have been on a foreign holiday um, when previously you had attracted just couples, for example. So all of you will have ex um, experienced that and it's important that you understand then how you're going to target your customers next year. Do you want more of those types of visitors or would you like to focus in on the core visitor type that you normally attract? Do you have new segments to your visitors now? So for example, if you have previously relied on the retirement, uh, retired market where people are coming for walking breaks or um, you know, creative breaks or just um, relaxing breaks with you, 
are they now much more cautious to travel and is it now important for you to start to try and attract customers who may be less cautious to travel who might have different types of hobbies that you've not normally been used to attracting so it could be wild water swimming it could be um, kayaking it could be mountain biking when traditionally you've only attracted walkers so it's important you understand from that point of view the types of customers you can now attract into your business in 2021 does your website reflect this do you talk about this on social media have you made it clear that you can store their ex very expensive precious bikes in your outbuilding and it's locked and safe have you talked about the types of activities that somebody could um, enjoy near you who now you know because they're bringing their children now so it's important that you understand what their needs, wants and desires are. And I, again, all of you will have such good experience of your customers to, to this point, and you will have really good understanding of what they need. But how has that changed? Do they need to, if you're attracting families, do they need to have more exciting things on offer? Because this is now their principal holiday and not their second weekend break in the autumn. So do you um, need to now provide much more interesting information about what kids could do or how to entertain teenagers? Do you need to make sure that your offer has adapted enough to attract those visitors that previously you haven't attracted or um, that now are looking for a different kind of experience? And for some of you, this might mean expanding your customer base. It might mean starting to communicate in a new and different way. You may need to start using Instagram if you're going to be attracting a younger audience, for example. You may need to adapt because you are um, attracting an audience that are much later at booking than you normally experience. So for some of you, you might be used to filling your diary in January or at least part filling your diary in January, but you might find that people don't do that immediately and that they are actually going to spend much more time in that dreaming browsing phase of their journey and not jump into booking quite as quickly. Um, and that will be based on tier information, um, pandemic development all that kind of thing and they may be feeling quite cautious about diving in and spending the money again the information about your flexible booking service on your website is vital here um, and also being one step ahead so don't be afraid to think about trends and ideas I mean one of the things I mentioned earlier was wild swimming I mean something that's been talked about extensively um, in 2020 something that a lot of people have discovered other people have discovered new hobbies and ideas so bread making um, microbrewery making your beer at home um, new craft activities again you may never have bothered to mention any of this before um, but actually your visitors might now really want to uh, come to Cumbria to experience that kind of activity for the first time. They may have got into their, you know, I think there was lots of news about people getting into sourdough baking um, and, and sourdough bread in lockdown, for example. Maybe they want to expand that now. Are you collaborating with a nearby um, bakery who are offering courses? Do you have that information on your website? Are you thinking ahead about what your visitors might like to be doing? And use language that lands. So what I mean by that is that if you look at Google data, and, and again, um, the, the data we're getting out of 2020 is, is ongoing and, and a little bit fluid, but even up to 2020, data showed on Google that people are much less likely to search for things like luxury hotel and much more likely to use much more sentiment based words like relaxing or tranquil or uh, holistic or um, they're looking for dark skies. They're looking for experience. They're using sentiment words and experience based words. And for example, the word luxury is plummeting as a, as a, a search term because people assume it. So people assume that it's going to be a pretty good telly, 
that there's going to be a really nice mattress, that it's going to have crisp white sheets. They might assume that everything is going to be really nice. But what they really want is to understand whether they can relax or whether they can switch off or be digital free or whether they can get a view or whether it's romantic or whether it's exciting or whether it's adventurous. And they're using those sentiment based words. So use language within all your marketing that really resonates with what your customers really, really are looking for. And that means that you can read blogs from Cumbria Tourism, you can read blogs online. There are lots and lots of different Condé Nast and um, Good Housekeeping, lots of different websites just have trend type blogs that give you an idea of the types of things people are looking for. And of course, big words like escape, dreaming, um, family gatherings, being together, peace and quiet, open countryside are all trends that people are talking about into 2021. So again, do that customer analysis, it's really important. All of this that I've been talking about so far has already started to help you understand about being special. So I'm not really a believer in a USP as such. I mean, unique selling points, they're almost impossible to come by these days because most people have done most things. But how do you stand out if you're in a, a town or a village with lots of different bed and breakfasts or lots of different small visitor attractions or lots of different activity um, opportunities? How do you stand out? Well, for me, it's important that you start with your brand, your values and your voice. And I know that some of you have heard me talk about this before. It's really important that it's clear what your business is and what it stands for. Is it a business that is all about um, getting into the countryside, lots of activities? Is it a family based business? Is it a business that's all about luxurious or relaxing or spa based activities? It's really important that people understand exactly what you stand for as a business what they know they can get, they will start to notice you and they will appreciate that out of all the bed and breakfast in that town, the reason they want to choose you isn't because you're cheaper, isn't because necessarily your four poster bed looks nicer than somebody else's, but because you talked about the fact that they could dry their muddy boots or that you could provide them with a, a flask and a, and a sandwich box as they go walking or because you talked about um, having a games room for the kids. It, it'll be those little things that help them understand. And if you're talking to your customer um, because you fully understand them, then, then that will really help you stand out as special to that customer. You need to give people plenty of reasons to visit. So again, when I talked about trends for 2021, we know that, for example, people are looking for open spaces. A lot of people who've been living in towns have had very restricted movement in 2020. So they may be looking for an opportunity to be able to walk from the door, to use their bikes, a large garden for the children to run around in safely, or for the dogs to visit without escaping. So it could be just that is to, in terms of a trend, or it could be much more experience based. So again, collaborating with um, different businesses to share opportunities to make bread or to visit a microbrewery or to do some gin tasting or to find a new mountain bike trail, whatever that activity or um, what, whatever that experience will be, because people are going to be looking for their lives to be enhanced. They're going to be looking for that experience that they've been dreaming of, frankly, for most of this year. Standing out from the crowd also is about that attention to detail, the attention to detail just on your website, the testimonials that you might share, your reviews we haven't talked about reputation management specifically but when customers or potential visitors are doing a search they've got from dreaming to browsing and they're trying to find you you have worked so hard to understand what they truly need want and desire what their challenges are and you have provided the answers and that excellence and being completely ready for marketing in 2021 will be the thing that sets you apart from the crowd. It's um, also about making sure that 
you are consistent in everything that you do. So again, this is marrying up all the different parts of your marketing mix. So does your social media bio and your about section talk about the same things as your website does? Does your website have the same keywords as your social media? Do people have the opportunity to get in touch with you easily, either by messaging you on social media and on your website? Do you have the same lovely, gorgeous branding and images across all that marketing mix so that you're easily recognisable? It's important that all that stands out and there aren't any gaps in your marketing mix because that lack of consistency will, um, this is a terrible thing to say, it's like it will make your business a little bit beige. It will, won't stand out. So when they're doing their search, when they're reading about different businesses and don't forget people browse late at night they've had a glass of wine they've got their slippers on and they if they're anything like me they've got about a hundred different tabs open oh i like that one not sure about this one what will stand out is the images the language that you use the way in which you describe how they might feel when they get to you and after all when we're in in the leisure industry we're only ever selling the feeling somebody will get when they visit you that's what you're selling you're not really selling a bed or a bike or a fun fair or a great cup of tea and a cream tea what you're really selling is the opportunity for them to be with those they love, the opportunity to be outside, the opportunity to feel relaxed, the opportunity to stop working, the opportunity to breathe fresh air. And that's really what you're selling. So make sure you're using that language to really stand out in and amongst your competitors, if you like. So, I've talked a lot. I feel like I could, uh, we could talk in depth for a long, long time about a lot of these different things. But after all, this webinar is really about a list of those things that you can polish, think about, upgrade and optimise during the Christmas break. So that on Boxing Day, when people have started to think about next year and they're starting to talk to their, friend, their friends and family over Zoom or whether they've actually managed to physically gather, you want to be at the top of the queue in terms of um starting to build a relationship with your visitors and even if they are only browsing at this stage you want them to be bookmarking your website you want them to be following you on social media so that they can keep an eye on you because that kind of relationship building at this stage will be vital even if they don't book until february or march and they don't book at their traditional january time so that's where the marketing mix really comes in. So I wanted to just go through a marketing 101 to think about all the different elements and how they come together to be a strategy. And again, I could talk about marketing strategy for a whole day, but here are some just some pointers for you to be thinking about. So I've already talked about the customer journey extensively and, and the customer journey is really important because um, you will create a series of touch points across everything that you do in terms of marketing. So some people might come across you in a web search. Some people might come across you on TripAdvisor because you're listed in the top 10 best cafes in Cumbria. Some people might come across you because a friend recommended you on Facebook. Somebody might come across you because... Um, somebody forwarded them an email that you'd sent out. There are lots of different moments when people will come across your business. And it's a question of making sure that you can then basically hold their hand to take them to the next part of the journey. So either um, you just hold their hand virtually, obviously, um, you're basically building a relationship with them so they stay with you until they're ready to book or you want to fast track them straight into booking or taking an action or finding out more um, but all the time you are imagining that there is this line where they're going to come across your business in lots of different ways and at each point you want to be able to funnel them down the next part of that journey 
So the first thing to do is creating great content. When I talk about content, I mean posts on social media, I mean your Instagram stories, I mean blogging, videos, images, um, the text on your website, pretty much any kind of content you can imagine. I'm not telling you that you have to take part in all that, but what I'm saying is, is that you need to create content. Um, oh, I've got a bit of noise there somewhere. Um, you've got core <laughs> content that people are able to um, be attracted by. They're able to help, it. you're able to share with them what's special about what you do, what's different, what experiences you're going to create, how they're going to feel when they get to you, how tranquil is it, how fun is it, how relaxing is it. Um, and you can do this in lots of different ways. So what I suggest to people is they create core content somewhere that stays. So for me, that's blogging. It doesn't have to be blogging, but blogging is a great way for you to create lots of useful, juicy content now that stays out there on the internet for a very long time. And it's something then that you can refer back to using social media, with your email marketing in, in other ways. So for, an exa for example, I was talking to a hotel in um, Cumbria fairly recently, and they had written a blog some time ago, I think even a couple of years ago, about um, the red squirrels that you could see from the hotel windows. And this was, you know, a nice blog to have as part of the website. You can see red squirrels, lovely. But in fact, actually, a great chunk of their traffic that arrived on their website was as a result of people looking for red squirrel locations in Cumbria. They didn't necessarily know about the hotel, but they certainly were looking for red squirrel opportunities or viewing opportunities or spot, you know, red squirrel spotting. And actually this hotel was gaining quite a lot of business and getting lots of bed nights as a result of that, because they would pop onto this blog, it would feed them into the website and then they would learn more about the hotel and then book a stay. So it's really important to think about where your basic content is going to be hosted. Of course, there is social media, Social media is brilliant too, um, and certainly you can share lots and lots of um, interesting pieces of content that will back up your marketing campaign. You will evidence the gorgeous views from the window. You will share pictures of families having a real good giggle at your place. You will share amazing pictures of your beautiful breakfast. You will share images or video of you taking delivery of the Christmas tree or making jam or whatever else activity is going on in your business. But it's important too to think about where that um, content is permanently because social media after all is entirely driven by algorithms and it's owned by somebody else so by all means share your content on social media I'm a big fan of social media but also think about those customers who might miss that or those customers who don't yet follow you on social media using blogs and email marketing will be a useful addition to your marketing mix to guarantee that people get the information you're wanting to share. So when, if imagine that we are the day after Boxing Day, that your customers are um, starting to think about next year and they are either in the dra dreaming or browsing part of their customer journey and they're starting to have a look around and they come across your website or they come across your social media and you look just the kind of business they're interested in, but they still need to discuss it with their family. They need to work out if they can afford it, or they need to, or they've decided to wait until there's more COVID news. How do you keep them interested in your business? And I would suggest you get them to subscribe to your email marketing and that you are sharing your intermittent blogs with them on email marketing. You're um, giving them a little, update every month about how you've now built the new mountain bike shed or you're sharing um, a fantastic guided walk that you can do from your door and this is what we're doing during lockdown or tier three i know you're not visiting us now but this is a brilliant five mile walk from the door 
all that information continues to add value to their life, land in their inbox. And then when they're confident and they think, yeah, we're going to book that break in Cumbria, who are they going to turn to first? It's going to certainly be you. I would also suggest as part of your marketing mix that you start to think about being the face of. So data shows, especially on social media, that faces sell. So essentially engagement levels go up the more that people can see faces. So whether that's imagery or videos of previous guests enjoying what you're doing, whether that is pictures of people on your website, or whether that's actually starting to be pictures of you. All of us have had to get really brave in, in 2020 and be on video. I have never seen my own face so much this year. I finally got used to the fact that this is what I see on a, on a, on a screen. But why not start sh sharing pictures of you, of your guests, of your dogs, of your animals, of your location with people in it? Because actually engagement levels really... Um, improve at that point and that will really upgrade and help your um, website visitors and help your social media fans to really identify themselves and your business because it really helps them connect with your business tell the story of your business too so quite often when i talk to businesses they say but i don't know what to say on social media or you know how much can i talk about this you know isn't it boring for people it really isn't. People can't be or aren't in Cumbria now. They can be actually, but maybe they're not or they haven't visited for whatever restrictions. Help them dream by showing them the walks from the door or showing them how you're developing your small visitor attraction for next year or sharing what's going on behind the scenes or telling them about what you're doing within your community. You know, if you're now, um, you're a cafe that is, is, doing um it is selling food but has also been helping a local food bank share that community story too this isn't just marketing isn't just about selling it's about engaging your customers so that they stay with you for when they're ready to book i've repeated this again and again experiences over stuff is always important yes it's important for you to share with them your your location they want to come to a particular village or place yes it's important that the price is right yes it's important they understand that there's a downstairs bedroom or that the bedroom is ensuite or that that you know you're open at a particular time or that you serve hot meals at lunchtime the basic information is vital but actually the way that you describe that within your marketing needs to be experiential always is it fun is it relaxing is it um learning something new is it exciting is it awe inspiring are they you know are they going to experience nature all those things need to be described in a way that connects with the sentiments of your visitors or potential visitors think too about optimizing your social media so again uh if you have struggled with a particular social media platform, uh, for example, you used to be on Twitter, but you very rarely use it now and you may mainly focus on Facebook, then it's better to get rid of that social media platform and focus on one than try to, you know, have this kind of dead space somewhere about your business. Because again, it um, detracts from your business and people might find you there and then there's nothing there. The other thing to think about is introducing a new social media platform. So again, if your customers have changed, um, you maybe are beginning to attract a younger audience or an audience with young children, Instagram is much more likely to be where they are, they are at. So it might be that you need to start focusing on a new platform on social media. I'm not a marketeer that advocates that you should be on all platforms at all times. It's much better overall to do one social media platform really well than to do three or four not very well. Make sure you're choosing the social media platform that your customers use and your ideal customers use, obviously. Um, and think too about being adventurous about new ways of communicating. So if you've never used video before, then try to use video. You don't need to have a big posh setup. A fun video with your mobile phone about 
you know, the snow falling or, um, you know, somebody doing an upgrade. I know quite a few businesses have been sharing lots of information with their guests about upgrading bedrooms and what they're going, you know, how they change things in the dining room or in the cafe for 2021. People love to see this kind of information and using your mobile phone to just take a short, quick video will really optimize your engagement um, across all channels. Having a video on your website is also very useful, by the way. Um, but you might choose to have a professional one on your website rather than the wibbly wobbly one for social media. So try to be a little bit adventurous about the types of marketing that you would use. Not sure why I've got that on now. That's Sue's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm back now I had something else we're back um so I realize I really recognize that I have hurtled through a long list of lots of opportunities ideas things for you to think about prompts to get you thinking over the Christmas break ways in which you can upgrade your website and we will talk about this in the Q&A but I think it's really important to remember you're not alone um, and all of you um, will have skills gaps or you will feel I'm not so confident in this or I'm not sure how to really talk about that. Uh, Cumbria Tourism is here to help you so I'm going to hand over to Sue and she can talk about the kinds of things they are marketing and that you could tap into or, or gain support from. Hi, thank you, Emily. That was really, really useful. Um, I've been writing stuff down madly myself there. Um, I always like to do this. I, I think that um, you, if you can take some key points away, um, it's always a good use of time as well. And um, I'm open, always open to ideas and, and um, interesting. I'll say, I'm just going to start with saying that I've spent the past couple of days and into the long evenings um, checking our holiday guide that um, we'll be going to press hopefully later on today and in that process of checking I do end up because believe it or not we do check phone numbers websites all sorts of things and I've been through seeing the great and the good of websites I think what you were saying about keeping information up to date is so crucial and I, I'm always surprised and this I, sh I should know because this happens every year the amount of people that don't have their phone number prominent on websites, um, not just for me checking, but you know, sometimes if you have special requirements, there are still people out there that want to pick the phone up and want to have a discussion. I'm a dog owner and my dog doesn't sleep on beds or anything like that. But by God, when we go away, if, he's, if there's a white sofa and he's been for a walk, that's where he will be with his muddy paws. So I always mm -hmm. like to talk to dog friendly places to make sure that they're not just tolerating a great big black lurcher if he comes in muddy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I used to run a guest house, so I'm absolutely bloody paranoid if he's around. So, um, but I, I don't tend to book online for that. I still pick up the phone. Otherwise, um, uh, I just think that's quite important. And what Emily was saying about keeping your COVID information up to date, the amount of businesses I've come across the last couple of days that still said we are opening on the 4th of July um, so again you might have to scroll down to find it I might be looking for a phone number at that point but I think this is the perfect opportunity to just make sure all that content is relevant and up there um, and it's only because it's it's very very close in my mind at the moment um, as CT we're here to help as ever um, and when just backing up what you said Emily on websites particularly and we could spend days on this <laughs> and it's a you know bugbear of mine and ours isn't you know it's it, it's I always say building websites like painting a bridge you get to one stage and you start again and start again but the importance of images images sell absolutely about alt, alt texts and black holes in the middle of pages um, if anybody ever needs any help or advice on this, just what our, our web team are always sort of happy to just point you in the right direction sometimes. Or do you think this image works? Then often a, a, a no to that. Just watch. You can take brilliant images on mobile phones now. Um, just watch if you're doing it and there's a mirror in the room that you're not there. 
so always sort of um, always amusing that um so um this is the perfect opportunity if 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 you asked me i've got 400 pounds to spend on marketing what should i spend it on i would say photography nine times out of ten to a lot of people because the importance of good photography is the amount of times if you think about how you search yourself online if you're going away you can just get switched off like that if the first image you see is wrong or you know they don't quite show the right rooms or there's not enough images on um it's it's just i would say so important you don't have to do it every year either um but making sure it's up to date if you have spent this time painting make sure the images on your website reflect what it actually looks like now and don't be afraid to show something new on there as well um this is perfect time as well i'm going to do a really big plug for this uh, visit lakedistrict.com we still have some business listings on there that don't have any images so if you this is the perfect opportunity to have a look the team are ready and waiting <laughs> they won't like me saying that busy but they'll get around to doing the changes that you need um, if you've got any video, we can put that on your listings. Um, the gentleman, gentleman, the, um, Andy, who does our SEO work for us, um, he always says, if I say, how many, how many words do we need on the business um, listing? Three to 600. Because if you do that on visitlatedistrict.com, we can help your SEO of your own website. We should never get higher than you, <laughs> but um, the more sort of links and good rich content you have on our site will help your own SEO. There is uh, on, on cumberchosen.org, there's a paper about how to use your DMO site to improve your own SEO. And he's written that, not me. Um, so that's really good. Um, we have uh, things that you can get involved in at this time. Um, our photo library, if you don't have access, uh, benefit of Cumber Tourism membership is loads and loads of new images. Um, our colleagues on the West Coast have just finished a massive photo shoot um, that Darren will be uploading all of those onto the website next week. So there's literally thousands of them, um, West Coast and West Cumbria. Um, we are, and they've got some fantastic videos to post. So if you're a coastal business, you can use them. Um, Copeland Borough Council have paid for them with help from Sellafield and they're for all of us to use. And there's some lovely ones there. Um, in the new year, we will have some um, actual countywide film, new film and photography that we've commissioned. I haven't yet seen some of them, but um, I believe from Darren, uh, he's just had some of them come through. So we should have those early year, which will really, really help with our promotion for next year. Everything is showing space. Again, something you alluded to, Emily. It's still going to be really, really important going into next year but we have what a lot of destinations that we're competing against don't. And people in, as tiers change, and we adapt our marketing accordingly to tiers, it's a bit like you write a plan on Friday, it will have changed on Monday. If you're feeling like that with your marketing, I totally feel your pain. Um, it just changes, it's, we've got to do it. So I would also suggest that with this tier system over the next, couple of months, uh, Richie Sunak's just um, uh, uh, extended the furlough scheme to April, I believe, maybe while we've been on this call. Um, so that sort of, that takes us into April. Uh, so there is, we're count, Cumbria as a county, we're huge. So um, focus on local, I would say, get us moving around. Um, you'll often find my husband, myself, my dog, staying overnight in Raven Glass. We live near Grange over Sand, so it's, but we do quite a lot within the county. So there's maybe an untapped market for you in, in local, if you're uh, obviously visitor attraction, you'll be used to days out. But I think we're all getting a bit tired of not being able to go away. <laughs> I know I am, a change of four walls, I always say, as good as anything. So maybe do some um, targeted facial, uh, but targeted social to um, people within our county, because. At least we're in the same tier group. So um, as well, I know as, as I move our marketing for for the visitor stuff for Cumbria Tourism, I'm look I'm doing targeted paid social to tier twos because if I do a lot of promotion within, oh, I'm saying we, Darren, 
Darren does a lot of promotion with our, our, our social media channels to generally our databases and, and our um, audiences. We tend to upset everybody in tier groups three and they're within our usual two or three uh, drive time area. So that's just a little bit from our point of view, what we will be doing next year. I'm not going to repeat, I think most people were at our members meeting a few weeks ago, so I'm not going to repeat everything that Heather and I were saying. It might change time next year, be a little bit later, um, but we are still focusing on these, um, on our new visitors that came up. Uh, very much that we've done two pieces of visitor research in the last six months, which has showed how we can, how these, the satisfaction rate of these new visitors. So we are looking at targeting them. We're also looking at, um, uh, at some influencer work as well, more of that than, than all sort of traditional media, which is definitely still there, but we have to look, media's changing. So we're having to look at these influencers. You don't necessarily look in your usual ways to be when, when they're doing, um, uh, you know, they don't, these, these markets don't always do their, um, how do you it, Emily, their research and planning and dreaming in the ways maybe our traditional empty nester um, uh, audiences are. So we're looking at that. So I would ask if you are, um, if you're happy to work with us on media trips, influencers, journalists, Keep our PR team involved in that, whether it's an overnight stay or you're happy to take them out. Um, you know, um, if you're an activity provider, we're looking at more diverse markets as well. So um, that if you're not used to working with our PR team on that, do um, do, do let us know. Um, so uh, I liked as well, Emily, what you're saying about linked, what I would call link marketing. Your messaging is the same all the way through. And I'm also a great believer if you on social media do it right rather than do everything you know if if you if you are a natural facebook user use use facebook if you don't do twitter don't do twitter it's fine it's okay if you can do instagram do instagram <laughs> as well um i'm not i have an instagram account and it's not for me um but um it certainly is as marketing manager for Cumbria tourism our instagrams um really really important so um, I know when I have my business, I, I, it was Facebook for me, but that was a few years ago. So we will be doing some more Dark Skies um, webinars uh, coming into the new year. So if you are wanting to get behind, behind the Dark Skies theme, please do. And we have um, a lot of work coming underway about how we are looking at experiences and how we'll be selling those online um, with different options because it is all about the experience. It's not about, you know, we can all sell our stuff, but you want to get that. I think we all come out of COVID, which we will come out of COVID. It's all about making memories again. Um, I've got step, I'm just going to talk about me, but I've got step grandchildren and stepchildren. And we've, all, as a family, we've decided against Christmas presents because when this is all over, we're all going to meet up and have a weekend away together, about sort of 15 of us. And we all live different places in the country. And we thought that's a lot better than sending gift vouchers. So um, I wonder whether there's a little market we can do on multi-generational work on things like that. Not seen each other for a while, come and spend time here. So, um, mm. that, you know, I think this is going to be an interesting Christmas. We'll get through it. So I think that we're here to help with CT. There's loads going on. Um, it is changing quickly by the day. Um, but we have some campaigns planned for next year um, and uh, we will be uh, campaigns you can get involved in. Um, there's some Discover England fund projects that are usually internationally focused that have all turned to domestic. So you'll be hearing what we need from you about that um, and content. My colleague Francine's working very closely on that and there's there to do with national trails, the coast, national park and a massive push on cycling. Um, but cycling, getting out and about, walking, but the cycle projects are mm -hmm. interesting ones and they'll go on beyond um, this financial year as well. So, shall we take some questions? Yeah, yeah. If I can do that, just, just to start with, I've popped, um, I'm Janet, I'm the local contact for the digital um, tech Cumbria programme. There is some slides which I'll ask Emily to move through to the contact page. Yeah. 
um, just to speed things up. Then I will unmute you all and you can ask me questions. While um, you're on asking questions, I'm also going to um, open our poll. We have a polling system so that we understand that we've delivered the correct content for you, how you found it, if you found it useful. So whilst delivering your questions, as a voice, not in the chat, um, if you could also um, uh, complete the poll as well. And you will we'll get a copy of this uh, webinar at, uh, over the next few days. Please bear in mind it's Christmas, so it might be slightly after that. <laughs> you are also going to now go on uh, open mic. So have <laughs> with your. So you, you'll have to individually unmute because I've unmuted you as a team. So you should now just uh, unmute yourselves if you want to ask questions. Oh, right, sweetie, I'm on this meeting. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can hear that. <laughs> Has anybody got a question for me? Uh, I've got oh, one, Emily. Yeah? Um, it's Bridget from the Quaker Tapestry in Kendall. Hi, Bridget. Can you hear me all right? We're, yes, we're worrying, I can hear you, yes. We're worrying about our printed leaflet at the moment. I, I really enjoyed your presentation, by the way, and it's given me lots of ideas for our website. But okay, uh, okay. One, one particular one I was going to ask you was, with our printed leaflet that we normally put days of the week we're open, opening times, etc., like that, we can, I can quickly see that it's going to become out of date very quickly, like, yes. like this year's did. So we're looking at 2021. Would you recommend that we put some, instead of putting days and times of opening, should we put, visit our website for up-to-date information or is that a big no-no? No, that's exactly what I would do. I think that the most important thing is that your customers don't find out-of-date information and feel disappointed or annoyed because they turn up and you're closed or because uh, you know they they get the wrong information i think it's so much better to have i mean if you still want to go for paper leaflets that's lovely um and you you know you need to bear in mind about covid and whether people will use leaflets in the same way but but that's great you can have some gorgeous images and some nice information about what you do but then yes i would absolutely be driving them to the website and i would be really open on the on the leaflet you could even say um due to uh, us all living through uncertain times we feel it's best you go straight to the website um, you might want to put the telephone number on there as well but mm. website's great and so long as you feel confident that you can keep that website absolutely tip top up to date all the time then yeah i would do exactly that thank you good okay. has anybody else got a question they'd like to ask I had, a, I had another little one if nobody else has got one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Is that all right? I, I think I sent it to Emily in the, in the private chat, but I, um, it's oh, sorry, do, I missed that. Oh, that's all right. It's to do with our, um, you mentioned photographs. Uh, we, have, we, we have hundreds and hundreds of photographs on the, on the website, uh, which are lovely. But I never know. We know about the alt text one and that, that's important for the key words and everything. But there are, there are three places on our website to title photographs. One is called a title, one yeah. area is called description, I think, and one area is called the alt text. Now, which area of those is the one where, you know, if they've got that audio, if visually impaired people have got that audio enabled, where they hover over a picture and it reads the text to them? Which, which is that? Is it the alt text or the description or the title? I think it's the description. Right. Now I think, so what I would suggest you do to be sure is add all three. Certainly alt text is Google, but it depends on which system that they're using. So it might be that it depends which audio system is being used and what type of website you've got. It sounds like you've got WordPress from the fact that you're telling me it's title, description and alt tag. Yes, it is WordPress. Yeah, so if I were you, I would put the title, which is just, you know, uh, flower embroidery. I, I don't, I think it's that kind of thing that you do. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. No, uh, the, descri the description might be something a little bit more detailed about the person who made it 
or mm -hmm. a little bit more detail about the fabric or whatever. And then the alt tag is just exactly what the image is. Mm. Picture, picture of embroidery on wall. Yeah, if that's that fine. Sense. Is that's that fine. okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. It didn't work for you, but it's worth it, I reckon. <laughs> did anybody else have any questions or, or did we have any in the chat box, Janet? No, we didn't have any in the chat box other than what's come out now. Um, okay. yeah, no. um, please feel free to ask and, and again as I said to you at the beginning no question is too daft <laughs> everybody needs simple and difficult questions answering I'm sure just while you're thinking about those questions I'll just give you a very quick overview of the digital tech Cumbria so as Emily explained she's one of our advisors um, and we have a range of advisors who can come and support a business and they do that in a one-to-one -one, uh, environment obviously virtually at the moment in general we would have come and sat with the business and what we do is in the first stage we go through a digital maturity process with you which sounds very grand, but it's actually making you think about each areas of your business and what's needed in a digital capacity. Today's focus has been around uh, your marketing strategies, social media, how to, how to in improve websites. Um, but we also look at e-commerce sites. We'll look at system integration. We'll even go as far as robotics and VR because we cover most things. And um, this support to you is free. There is a <coughs> on it because it is European funded uh, and at the moment for everybody on this call I'd recommend that if you, even if you think about you might need this support you register as quickly as you can over the next couple of days. We have a relaxation rule from European funding in place at the moment which is due to end on the 31st of December uh, and that allows us to support more retail hospitality tourism sectors which are normally excluded from European funding. So. If you don't want to take it up in January, but you've registered, that's fine. If you haven't registered in January and you decide you do, you won't be able to do it unless we get very quick up word before, Christmas, before government breaks off for the uh, Christmas break to tell us that we can do it. Um, so please do um, come back to, you know, sign up or have a chat with me privately. I... Um, Sorry, I'm just concentrating on C who wanted to speak but can't unmute. You're actually unmuted C, so I'm um, not sure what's going on there. Pop it in the chat if you want to ask one and I'll ask Emily separately. Two jobs at once. I'm multitasking here. I'm <laughs> in the chat. I'm talking to you. Very well. <laughs> um, so do please come back to me. I'm just going to ask the question. I've got the poll up, but I'm, I'm not seeing any answers coming through. So can you guys see the poll? Uh, yeah, I've answered it and submitted it. All right, it's obviously going to do a sudden update for me then because uh, I'm not getting anything at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but yes, please do get in touch. Please do get involved. Have a chat with me. My personal contact details are on, on the chat at the minute. It's just Janet A at winningmoves.com. So please just give me a call. You can go through the Digital Tech Cumbria link there that goes into our central team and then it will come back out to me but happy to have an informed chat with you on that point i'll just see um no i can't see any more questions coming in no i can see um i can see the chat box now and no I, I can't see any more questions anybody got any verbal questions they want to ask me before i go Sorry, i've got um c come back and ask the question now i have a question for uh, okay about videos on websites and if you can go through again about them possibly slowing down websites okay yes so um if we think about rich content on our website i.e great images um, video then yes it's important uh certainly from a google ranking point of view um, they like to see video if your video is embedded in your website, um, then that can sometimes slow things down. So you would need to use your web designer, your web person, or turn to the web guys that at Cumbria Tourism that Sue mentioned to just give you a little bit of a top tip about whether that, you know, whether your video is going to slow 
your website down because obviously you don't want to one of the other ways to do that is to host your video on youtube or vimeo um, and then it is uh, it, it it means that it the video isn't playing out of the back of your website is effectively playing from a third party platform and that should reduce the slowing down of the video playing um, if you do that it's quite nice to get yourself a little youtube channel or a vimeo channel um, with a few of the videos from your business and that means then that if they do then click through fully into youtube they will find themselves surrounded by your business on youtube and not lots of other stuff um, so that should help solve that issue but certainly having a video on your website is lovely um, as is making sure that you have a video as a featured video on your Facebook page for example um, and optimizing your videos on your Facebook page also really helps and works I hope that helps I'm going to assume it does I think a mic's uh, obviously yes uh, okay okay <laughs> Okay, well, we'll draw it to a close, people. Thank you very much for your time on the call. And thank you. Yes, people. thanks, everyone. Uh, and uh, we've got one more. How do you optimize videos on your Facebook page? That's an interesting uh, Okay, so on Facebook, Facebook um, has recently introduced something called Facebook Business Suite. So you will notice for any of you who are, who are using Facebook regularly on a desktop or a laptop, and I would suggest that you do this from your laptop rather than your mobile phone, because try as I might, I don't love all the editing options on Facebook mobile um, for the admin of a Facebook page. It just makes it easier. So you will notice if you're trying to do anything like schedule a post on Facebook or do anything different like um, upload an event, um, it keeps encouraging you to go to the business suite. If you go to the business suite then, and it's a free tool to use, on the left hand side you will see that you've got a place where you can um, optimize your content and you can include, and that includes your videos. And what I would suggest is, is that you can now create collections of videos. So for example, if you've got videos of jam making or cooking, you might put all those together and if you've got videos of fantastic views and walks from the door, then you might put all those together. And it also gives you the opportunity to add descriptions and titles to those videos. And really that optimization really helps with the search engine optimization. It helps people more likely find your videos who are doing a more general video search on, on, you, on uh, Facebook because people are doing that more. And it also makes it a lot easier for a visitor to your Facebook page because then they can dive into the videos that really interest them straight away without having to plow through some of the other videos that might be less interesting to them. So yeah, use Facebook Business Suite um, and just add descriptions, titles, and maybe start to pull some of your videos into little collections uh, and that all helps optimize your videos. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody no problem. About there. I think with that's yep. Yeah, well, yep. Yeah, yeah, no, we're there. We're there. <laughs> that's okay. okay, thank you, Alison. And listen, have a have a great Christmas, everyone, and um and good luck with all your marketing uh upgrades and optimizations. <laughs> okay. Yes, happy Christmas, everyone, and have a lovely new year. I'll end the meeting now. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.